the capabilities of generative AI of the billions of parameters level of complexity, so these really big machines, is transformative. AI isn't going to replace humanity anytime soon, but there's some things that AI is really great at that humans are not so good at. AI is changing healthcare in big ways, from using new kind of data to making care more predictive and more personalized. I'm here with Professor David Clifton from the University of Oxford to talk about how these advantages are transforming health. Welcome, David. So happy to have you with us today. Thank you, Tina. So talking about AI systems, it goes obviously far beyond what I can even imagine. But which kind of data are you looking at when it comes to healthcare innovation? Great question. Um, there's a lot of great work that goes on in medical imaging, uh, particularly here at EMBS. Yeah. Some really exciting work in imaging. I don't do that. So I do everything else. <laughs> so, so that means things like um, monitoring patients with wearable sensors. Yeah. It means looking at genomics and proteomics, about the contents of the cells and uh, the fundamental biology. Uh, it means things like using routine data. So okay, one, routine. Of the, one of the exciting parts about developing things for use in real clinical practice is that you have to use real data. And what can you transform these data sets into? So the primary goal would be to solve my clinical collaborators' needs. They know best what their patients need yeah. and what their trainee doctors need to do a good job, what they are not so good at themselves, perhaps. Humans have got limitations. Yes. And AI isn't going to replace humanity anytime soon, I would say. Yeah. Certainly, we're not trying Thank to do you. that. Um, but there's some things that AI is really great at that humans are not so good at. And you work closely with the healthcare professionals. So what's the key to turning AI into tools that they can actually use? I think it's starting with the problem and working yeah. backwards, talking with a medic, understanding exactly what it is. What, what's needed and how that thing has to be built so that clinicians can use it. That isn't obvious. Okay. And if you start there, it really changes yeah. the AI that you use. It really produces the response to that yeah. requirement, okay. really generates new ideas. And a lot of inventions of use and you know, significant work come from doing it that way around. Let's talk about drug GBT and how this was developed and also how it can help healthcare professionals. It's really hard for primary care doctors, your family doctor, yeah. to stay on top of guidance on how drugs should be prescribed um, and of course trying to identify any drug-drug interaction. So it's about the ability for an AI to make principled recommendations about drugs, about doses. Is the patient in front of me going to have a, an adverse drug reaction? And as a human being, it's really, like I say, it's really hard to stay on top of the guidance. And just to have a, a sense check, an additional safety net, is something that, for example, drug GPT is really good at. If we are looking at the potential here of AI, what do you think the next, next breakthrough might be I think within healthcare? Sure, sure. I think we're seeing breakthroughs already. So my kids use chat GPT, large language models, they use mid-journey to generate images and so on. The capabilities of generative AI of the billions of parameters level of complexity, so these really big machines, is transformative. And I, in my field, we used to joke that you call it machine learning when you want to talk to scientists, but you call it AI when you want to sell it. That's, that's a, that was a standard <laughs> yeah. joke a few years ago. It's not true anymore because okay. of these new capabilities. There is an, almost an emergent behavior where the ability of a machine far exceeds what you expect. Yeah. And so you, you obtain things like the conversational interface that you're familiar with from using large language models. Um, that can be audio as well, of course. Um, and the ability of these machines carefully constructed to explain what it is that they're recommending. The ability to have explanations and other tricks like that, so to speak, other components, really make the difference between something that's great for your kids to use and you know explore and have fun with versus something that's sufficiently robust yes. for use with patients that you could meaningfully put into clinical practice. Amazing. I can't wait to see what the future brings. Thank you so much for stopping by and talking to us today. Great pleasure. Thank you, Tina. Thanks for watching, but now an important disclaimer. 
The content of this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Viewers should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.